we have the recording uh, also that will be online later. So I uh, hope to share this as well. So we just have to go many different channels. So I think I've talked enough, and I will send more people here. And uh, yeah, I will hand over now to uh, Misako Ito, who will introduce the panelists. Misako works a very long time with us here with the UNESCO from Bangkok, <coughs> and will hand over to you. So thank you very much, and a big round of applause for Misako and all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario, for hosting this uh, panel on uh, indigenous languages, which is quite an original topic uh, for Force Asia. And uh, thank you also for joining this uh, panel discussion, uh, despite uh, that it's a lunch time break. <laughs> but we, we will try to make it very interesting. And because we are a small group, please feel free to intervene and ask questions and engage in the discussions because you know, it's not a big audience. So just to give you some uh, figures uh, that UNESCO has, we have um, uh, around 6,700 spoken languages today, but we estimate that half of them are endangered. And we have an estimate that every two weeks, one language disappears. And when one language disappears, it goes with the culture, identity, uh, all the perception of the world that is related to those languages, which disappear from the world and from the cultural diversity of the world. So this is a real uh, concern from UNESCO, which is uh, an intergovernmental organization. Uh, we are championing in the area of cultural diversity and try to protect the, the world cultural diversity worldwide. And we also estimate that 90% of the world languages spoken today could not continue to exist until the end of 21st century. And most of them, the majority of those languages are indigenous languages. So uh, the panel discussion here, and we have an uh, eminent speaker from both indigenous community, but also technology, free and open source software, but also language expert. So the panel discussion here is to discuss how technology, and especially the free and open source software, can help to preserve those languages and also to revitalize uh, some of them. So uh, maybe I can just go through the speakers and you can introduce yourself by your name, your background, very quickly. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Samin Ngai, and I'm uh, from uh, Punong Indigenous. And I'm working for Cambodia Indigenous Youth Association, and I'm from Cambodia. Good afternoon. My name is Orani Jariyam Putngam. I come from Thailand, and I work as a project coordinator at Foundation for Applied Linguistics. We provide an education program for the children in a remote area which is called mother tongue based multilingual education. Kulumka, good afternoon. Uh, this is Mathura Bikas Tripura from Bangladesh. Uh, my language is Kokborok. Uh, my uh, ethnicity is Tripura. Uh, we, uh, we are working on the rights of indigenous people's languages uh, since 2006. My organization's name is Jabarang Kulan Somiti. It is led by the indigenous peoples. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dawn Buta Singh. I'm from Laos. I'm working with um, Kumu Indigenous uh, focus on youth and elder in remote area of Laos. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm uh, Davide. I work for UNESCO, and uh, I'm a background as a computer science uh, person, and uh, I was uh, involved uh, several times in, uh, in uh, projects involving the uh, creation of uh, technology for uh, rendering uh, scri uh, complex uh, scripting languages. Okay, thank you, David. And, uh, so maybe I can start one uh, with one question about the challenges that you know indigenous people are facing in this region and in the country. Um, who, who wants to pick, pick up the questions first? Yes, down, yeah, please. The challenge, um, from my point of view, in the Mekong, in the Mekong region, uh, 
the relocation of the indigenous from their homeland to different uh, area. Um, and because the development project often take place in the area of where the indigenous people live. And for the indigenous in Laos, for example, uh, with the project come to the area, then they have to uh, relocate. Some is relocated by themselves, but some are forced relocated. So that is uh, one challenge. And that uh, affected to um, culture, language, and art lost in the community. And also um, about climate change. So here, the climate change is also about uh, food security and also uh, society change. This is uh, happen a lot in Laos. So in my, uh, for the language lost, I want to uh, share with you about example when I was a child. So when I speak my own language in a majority uh, society, and we feel uh, shy. I feel shy because the majority, they will laugh when I speak my own language, and then they make fun of us. So, um, yeah, and then we, we try, but you know, we are small uh, people, small ethnic group with a big groups of people. So it's like um, small water cannot uh, stop fire. So we feel often like when we go to a market, like two people go together and then when we talk our own language, talk in our own language, uh, people will just point at us like, ah, look at her, like make fun of us and we feel like we are a crowd in, in uh, a big society because um, my parent, my grandparents also um, have been relocated for three times because of organization, because of the development project. So we have to move from one place to another place to join with a different ethnic group to become bigger village. So that is in uh, one policy in our country. Small village have to join small village to become a bigger village. And often the indigenous people will put uh, we are put with um, the majority in Laos. And that's how we, we lost our language, our culture, and the art. And many of us, we could not remember like uh, the history of our people, the history of our ancestors, the footprint we could not find. So, yeah. So you don't have any uh, support from, uh, apart from your close family and maybe community, to continue to use the languages, you don't have any support from the government to uh, continue to use that languages? Mm -hmm. So uh, in Laos, every ethnic group allow people, mm -hmm. and we are not allowed to be indigenous. So Laos, we are not recognized at, as indigenous people, so we allow. And uh, for us, it's very difficult um, to preserve our own language. And because we are not allowed to set up a learning center focused on indigenous language. So if we cannot do that, and it will be difficult for us to like gathering with youth to learn their own language and the culture that we have. So the supporting now is like um, indigenous youth are together, like Green Laos community where I work, is we try to gather with many youth and we try to brainstorm what the language that you can remember, what our culture that you can recognize, we do like that. Mm -hmm. And this is like uh, the first start of our uh, activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Thank from government, we don't, we, we don't have yet, like mm -hmm. if we want to set up a learning center, it will be very difficult mm -hmm. and they're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so yes, I mean, do you have uh, also the similar challenges in yeah. Cambodia? Um, I just would like to add from the, my friend from Laos. Actually, uh, if you look at the economic growth in the Mekong region, there is many big uh, uh, investment projects like mining, uh, hydropower dam, economic land congestion. All these projects is very have big impact to the indigenous community because most of projects are come to the remote area especially in the indigenous territory. Um, 
if you look at the, the uh, indigenous language challenges uh, uh, at the current situation, most of the young people, they could not speak their indigenous language well, especially in Cambodia, we have 24 indigenous people, indigenous groups, and we have different uh, languages. And uh, there are about six, uh, 17 indigenous, they can speak their language, but uh, the other, they almost lost their language. They cannot speak their language. This is also the, the big concern. And for SIA, I mean Cambodian Indigenous Youth Association, are working try to, uh, 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 concert, uh, you know, like uh, preserve or like uh, restore how we can make uh, their language alive because this is a part of our identity, which is recognized in the national and international laws. And um, of course. Uh, Right now, if you look at the elder, also elder not have uh, um, time to, to, to teach or to, uh, to, gather, to gather the people to, to train how they can to uh, maintain their identity and ident their language as well. Also, like some youth, when they study at school, uh, for example, in Cambodia, from grade one to grade three, uh, if the teacher who come to teach the student in the village, they have to speak uh, indigenous language uh, 80 or uh, 85 percent. They have to speak in uh, indigenous language. And then when they start from grade four to grade six, they have to speak Khmer uh, language uh, from 80 to 85 uh, percent. And then when indigenous students start grade uh, seven, we can uh, secondary school, of course they can speak full in Khmer and also they have to learn English. So it's very hard for them to, you know, to, to, to catch up, you know, the some uh, session that provide by teacher. This is also one, uh, one uh, challenge. Also when they co continue the study at the university, most of the subject and most of the communication, they have to speak it in Khmer and also like in English. So this is the one thing that we lost, how we lost our language, we lost our communication, and this kind of the big concern. I think it's, this time it's good that UNESCO come up with this event and try to raise that concern. I hope the government and other partner who are working on indigenous um, uh, area, they have to very con uh, and, uh, concentrate and try to, to work together how to preserve and maintain uh, our identity and our language uh, for the uh, sustainable development in the in the country and also in the international, mm. yes. Just yeah. my idea, I think, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for contributing. Uh, so indigenous languages are threatened, but, um, you know, according to your perspective, why you think it's so important to protect those languages, you know? They have a lot of people asking, you know, whether it wouldn't it be better to focus on national languages to, you know, as a mean of communication, economic growth for the country, why is it so important to protect the indigenous languages despite the, you know, delocalizations and a lot of uh, challenges that the indigenous people are facing? You want to, yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, actually, uh, I have to uh, uh, mention uh, one of the uh, big challenges for the indigenous languages, uh, especially in the so-called nation states the existence of uh, indigenous peoples are not uh, that much recognized. If uh, I mention about my uh, country's constitution, uh, according to the constitution, only the uh, Bangla, the mainstream language, is the uh, official language in our country. No other languages are uh, recognized by the constitution. Uh, only in the recent amendment, there is one uh, clause included uh, on the cultural uh, promotion of the indigenous peoples. No other things like the rights of the uh, indigenous peoples to uh, on their land and uh, other heritage things. So uh, th th these are also very much a big challenge uh, for the uh, indigenous peoples to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to improve their uh, this uh, education system and many other things uh, related to the language and culture. Uh, so, uh, there is also one thing like uh, the, the policies. Uh, there are many uh, policies in Bangladesh. In some policies, uh, the, like the uh, national education policy, uh, in that policy, uh, indigenous language is somehow uh, recognized. Uh, but uh, in, uh, during the uh, implementation, there are some uh, 
uh, some sort of uh, dilemma and uh, some sort of uh, sort of the uh, bureaucratic uh, system which is uh, uh, somehow uh, blocking the uh, uh, smooth implementation of these uh, uh, policies. So these, these are also very much important things. So if uh, we want to uh, overcome all these things, actually we have to uh, make the government uh, fast uh, motivated to uh, really uh, implement the rights of the indigenous peoples and their languages and cultures. So that is very much important. And uh, uh, we also uh, need to strengthen the political commitments uh, because of the SDGs and many other uh, international uh, uh, mechanisms, the government they pretend to be uh, very much uh, positive to the uh, to the rights of the indigenous peoples and other uh, mi uh, minority groups in their countries. But uh, in the implementation level, uh, these are not actually that much uh, effective. So uh, in our country, the government is, uh, has started the. Uh, uh, education in uh, indigenous languages uh, sin, uh, since 2017, uh, but still there are many other uh, issues. Uh, the, uh, they have uh, developed the uh, materials, education materials. It is distributed in the fields, but the teachers are not teaching. The materials are not in use. So what is the use of this type of uh, activities? So the teachers uh, should be trained uh, how to uh, deliver the, uh, the, the education system in their own languages. And also, uh, there are also some uh, shortages of uh, teachers in the fields. The teachers are uh, not uh, allocated, not, uh, not, not posted to the, to the same speaking languages, language uh, areas. So if the teachers are not uh, located in the same uh, language speaking areas, so the uh, students are actually not getting education in their own languages. So it is also important. So another thing is, uh, uh, like, uh, what I think is, we have to show the government that they have benefits if they uh, implement the, uh, the the right of indigenous uh, indigenous peoples and their languages, because if we want to uh, if we want to imp uh, achieve the SDGs the SDG goals, the government uh, if the government wants to do that, they have to. Uh, they have to uh, address the issues of indigenous peoples. Without addressing the issues of indigenous peoples, it is not possible because uh, the SDG itself says that no one shall be uh, uh, yeah, left behind. Yeah. So that, that's the point, actually. Yeah, thank you. So SDG is a Sustainable Development Goals. I don't know if you heard about that. It's a, a set of 70 goals that were adopted by the United Nations General Assembly to pursue for the next uh, until 2030. So, and there is a very big slogan that says in no one left behind, which is the, the key principle for the attainment of uh, sustainable development goals. So you, you, you mentioned that languages is, um, the, the, you mentioned that indigenous right to languages to, is it something that is recognized internationally or is there any instrument that are? Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, many uh, international instruments like the UNDRIP, indigenous, uh, United Nations Declaration on the indigenous, uh, Rights of Indigenous Peoples. So that is a very strong uh, instrument for the indigenous peoples to claim their rights. And uh, there are also others like the uh, ILO uh, 107 mm. uh, about the uh, rights of uh, uh, education in their own language up to uh, primary level. And uh, similarly, uh, the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals uh, 4 itself, uh, uh, saying that uh, uh, it is like an inclusive education. So if we want to make it inclusive, really inclusive, we have to include the indigenous peoples. Yeah, so uh, maybe now we can uh, move on on the questions about you so how technology can really help to revitalize those languages and also uh, create some resources to develop those languages. Um, Orani, do you want to comment on that? Okay, um, maybe I will start with my, my, my opinions. Um, what, what, what I work is about uh, multilingual education and then we provide based on mother tongue 
mother tongues, and then we, we have a lot of uh, teaching material like uh, this. This is we, uh, this is we call big book, no? And then we have a picture story, and oh, we have a lot of things. And I think that um, nowadays, indigenous people, even me, you know, when I when I uh, when I grow up, when I uh, live in uh, was in university, I'm not recognized, and I'm not. Um, I'm not proud of myself. I mean, I'm not proud. I, I, I'm Karen. I mean, I belong to Karen Indigenous, and then I'm not proud of myself. And then when I, after that, when I finished university, and then I, when I joined in this program, I feel like, ah, oh, this would be very nice to, we can learn both, you know, we, uh, through, this, through this program. They can learn uh, their own language, and at the same time, after that, they can bridge it uh, to Thai, Thai, no? Pasa Thai, national language, and also it can be developed in another language. It would be very nice for, uh, for, for them and also for us. Uh, I mean, how can we help indigenous people uh, recognize about this? We have to, to show them what is the benefit. If we, if we, uh, if, if I talk to you, you have to, you have to, you know, preserve your language. You have to do, you have to speak your language. Maybe, you know, a lot of indigenous people they are not, they are not agree with with us. But if we say like, uh, you know, if you wanna be good in Pasa Thai, in Thai language, if you wanna be good in Pasa uh, English, you should start. I mean, start with your language, and then it will be something linked to your uh, in 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 another languages. Uh, I what you say? What you ask? How technology? Right? Technology can be like a, a big resource nah, for us to 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 collect uh, those uh, material things. I mean, all we can do like um, a teacher training, uh, like e-learning things to train the teacher to help the children to to learn their own language. Or we can do like a dictionary in our own language. We can do. Uh, even to raise awareness, we can provide a video thing, what a poster or whatever. Yes, this is what we need. So, for example, for the Karen languages, do you have? Um, I mean, do you have computer software that's in these languages? Do you have written script? Do you have a lot of resources online? Can we publish a website in these Karen languages or? Yes, in Thailand we have 74 languages now. Current is the big group, and then I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, that is, that is. Um, I think maybe some of of, of uh, the application or uh, is related with our in in current. I think we already have it, but in another language, a small language that is easy to appear. With them, we don't. I think we don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, I, I cannot tell exactly what what application, but maybe yeah. I think you you mentioned that uh, mother tongue based multilingual education, right? That uh, people need to master the mother tongue, the Karen languages, before starting to learn Thai national languages or international languages, which is English. Do you think the lack of resources, the lack of technology in Karen languages, is could be a barrier for people to, you know, to master fully these languages and to move on other languages or, or the current state is, um, I mean, is, is good enough? I think it's, it's good for indigenous language because we can provide a place, I mean, the place that they can uh, reach to the, the, the information, they can reach to the, um, the, the resolve uh, in, in our own language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, David, <laughs> you have been working for you know free and open source software, so you know the spirit of you know collaborations and how innovative ideas can be developed through collaborations. Do you think the force community and you know free and open source software can help in this area? Where 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 do you think are the you know areas of actions point? Of course, uh, is it is working. Uh, first of all, I think uh, the uh, role of technology. Uh, I have this uh, little thing about it. Okay. Well, anyway, the, the role of technology uh, is has to be the role of facilitator. So, uh, for addressing many of the issues that you just uh, raised, uh, uh, 
the technology uh, is, I mean, in many ways, in many of many things we do every day, technology has this role. So uh, it's an in inevitable that uh, that uh, also open source uh, play a role, and uh, also because uh, you know, let's let's say. It's Working on uh, programming, uh, we all, I mean, always used to hear this phrase that, uh, you know, the programming, the language of programming is English because of many programming languages, uh, uh, some brief reference to some English uh, words, but that's uh, uh, wrong in many ways, <laughs> also for programming, but uh, it's about uh, the concept of what is uh, behind the language. The language is uh, something that uh, it's uh, there to express something, right? So. Uh, that, that's the, f the, the, the point. So if uh, we're not able to express uh, on a, in our own language, that's, uh, uh, that's what uh, we, are, we are saying here. So it's a, it's, it's a problem. So technology is a way to help uh, the expression of people. And this is why I think it's important to, uh, um, that the community, uh, I mean technology, be more aware and that the community is also uh, aware, community of open, open source, it's a big global community because we are not talking about a few people and te the technology companies uh, took a few years to actually realize uh, that uh, this is uh, uh, a reality because um, when you talk about uh, big, big companies, they, they, you know, the objective is to, of course, make a business and when you try to invest for making a business, you, you invest on the, on the mass. So, Develop products for the most people that can can uh, actually use uh, or buy the services of the product, and uh, when it comes to minorities, that's uh, of course <laughs> a problem because you are not very uh, keen to invest uh, efforts and time and uh, you know all your resources in uh, in developing something which is uh, going to be used by a very few people. But actually, that's also not true. I mean, the international year is an opportunity also to say that uh, these uh, um, indigenous communities represent uh, uh, almost 400 uh, million people all around the world. And, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, totally, uh, I'm reading here, it is uh, an amount of more than 2,600 2, languages that are uh, considered to be indigenous. So of course, within these languages, there are two languages that are used by very few people, and this comes to the language in danger. And, uh, uh, there, there's been there have been some process. Uh, UNESCO has been, for example, approving some uh, normative instrument uh, that are trying to push the industry also to move uh, towards the support of uh, indigenous languages, uh, like the recommendation on uh, uh, languages uh, in uh, cyberspace, uh, which was uh, 2003. Back, back 2003, right? So, uh, and this is uh, one way where uh, you know. Um, it's an attempt to sensitize and to try to move uh, the, the uh, decision makers towards supporting this kind of action. From the, re from the th theory to the reality, of course, is a different uh, uh, you know, story. Uh, and then when it comes to technology, it is, uh, of course, about uh, uh, standards. It is about uh, open standards, uh, mainly. So the, uh, we were already mentioning before maybe the, uh, about the Unicode uh, of course, which is a, a giant step into the uh, making it possible to support uh, uh, complex uh, languages. Um, but that's uh, something that has to be sustained. And, uh, uh, you know, Unicode is a very uh, heavy, long process. And there again, it's uh, up to the community also to come up with the solutions to propose. Uh, it's about making typefaces, uh, you know, fonts. For, and so we have to, to be able to design open fonts, uh, to be able to design an open uh, input, uh, uh, you know, tools, because not, languages are not, uh, no, they are, they are, you cannot input uh, uh, things in the same way for all languages, so you need to have, uh, you know, um, uh, different kinds of input methods which may not exist. And uh, then uh, it goes to the rendering, of course, of the language, because it's uh, no point in uh, having something that you cannot uh, uh, then uh, display or print. And um, you know, these are all uh, uh, little things that actually are making it uh, possible or impossible for uh, people to um, use their own language in uh, education, yeah. in, uh, in ev every, everywhere, in, uh, in uh, news, and also to tell the story yeah. about the language. Because 
you know, some languages will, will disappear. History is, is full of, uh, you know, uh, things change, of course. But at the same time, we also, there is also a need for us as a humanity to, uh, you know, tell the story of what, uh, what was there or what is, what is there today. And uh, you cannot do it uh, without uh, this kind of, of tools. So, yes, open source uh, community can uh, actually uh, work in many ways in uh, supporting this um, uh, effort. And, uh, and this is also the one of the reasons of this uh, hackathon today. I think it's really to sensitize the young developers, or less young developers, that uh, actually this is not, uh, this is a, a fight to be taken, and that this is a, a very good example of where, uh, you know, uh, open source a spontaneous uh, uh, maker <laughs> kind of uh, F, um, impulse can, uh, can really make a difference. Thank you, David. I think, yeah, you really mentioned a very important point that, you know, the International Year of Indigenous Languages is an opportunity to remind us that the indigenous languages are not dead languages. They are the languages that are spoken by uh, almost 400 million populations in the world and, uh, you know, more than 70, 80 countries. So it's very, very important for us to protect. And maybe, um, is there any uh, comments or um, um, from the audience that you want to, uh, or questions that you want to raise? Um, do you have any ideas of how, you know, you as an active member of open source community can contribute in this area um, with AI or, yes, other technologies? Yes. questions were annoying. <laughs> yeah, so my question is actually to, well, the primarily to the representatives of people speaking minority languages. Because I was wondering if there is any, uh, shall we say, resistance from within the communities themselves. And the reason why I'm asking is because, I mean, my language is not that small. It's not endangered. but. I didn't even realize myself the importance of my language until I actually moved abroad and started using primarily English when I realized that only if I were to only express myself in English, I would be very, very limited. There are many experiences I cannot express in English. Not because, uh, you know, so I was wondering, and, but before I did that, and I have many friends, especially friends who work in technology, that insists that, uh, my language is Swedish, by the way, so they insist that Swedish is, is not important in technology, uh, all the documentation is available in English, all the information we need is on the English Wikipedia, we don't need the Swedish Wikipedia, which happened to be the number two Wikipedia in the, in the world, actually, but, uh, which, is, which is interesting, right? So you have very large, the language is used a lot, and, and, and clearly a lot of people edit Wikipedia in my language, but still, especially within tech, it's completely dismissed by a lot of people. It, most of the technology people I work with wouldn't even hear about using, setting their Linux desktop to Swedish or reading the Swedish version of documentation, et cetera, et cetera. And, and this is within a language that is rather big. So I'm thinking within the small, uh, the indigenous language, within the indigenous languages, there must be, I'm imagining that there's a lot of internal resistance, people saying, okay, fine, it's my language, but there are so few people speaking it, and I need to speak Thai or, or whatever language to make myself understood. Why, why should we keep doing this? Right? I, I can understand why people outside the community would would discard the language, but I'm thinking that it probably happens within the communities themselves. So I'd like to have a comment on that, mm. if possible. Yeah, who wants to? Uh, I want to share about the uh, my Kumo indigenous in Laos. I think uh, very important for us as indigenous to know our own language, because we have uh, rich 
uh, history in the country. That's why we call ourselves uh, indigenous. So uh, for us, because we are living in the community, because we are living in the country, that our language still recognize. And at the same time, the language are disappearing because of all the ethnic group or the majority. So for us to, to know our own language is very important because when we speak to our parents, we still use our language. And we are shy to speak in different language with our parents, with our uh, families. We feel shame because uh, since we were born, our parents always keep talking and telling story about our footprint, the footprint of our ancestor, and the culture that can uh, color our ethnic group. We feel so proud because our culture, the language, so unique in the country, how to say. And for us, if we don't have the language, if the culture disappear, we feel nothing. Like in Laos, for example, the many ethnic group, especially the majority, majority they call ourselves, um, we are Kumhu, but they don't call us Kumhu. They call us Lao Kang. Lao Kang, it means you look down and on us. Lao Kang, it means you are in the middle. You have no place to stay. You don't have your own culture. You don't know your own language. This is how we feel when they call us Lao Kang. And also, um, many people will call us Ka. Ka is like slave. But in the history where we, where we hear from our parents, uh, our history are so big. You know, our culture are so rich, and we can feel that we can touch that, and we can listen that from our, uh, from our parents. So that is so beautiful, but when we hear it from uh, different ethnic group, it's so uh, different why they describe us that way. We also don't understand. And also, if you want to do like research on history of indigenous people, you have to submit a letter a permission to do the research. And before you can publish your uh, research, you need to ask permission from the government. So uh, before you submit, I mean, when you submit the research, uh, the government will first scan all the information, and they will allow you to publish uh, which part of it. So here, um, the culture and the history of our uh, indigenous is still hidden, and there are some so many things that we should uh, bring out. I think to preserve the language also, back to that session, um, once the, the language alive, the culture will come back and the history will present itself. That's what we believe. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Yes, Orani. Okay, uh, from uh, educational aspect, uh, if the children who are no much uh, more than one languages, they will be more, much better in their learning. So if they start with the language that they are family with, the, the thing that they are very close to, maybe they can express what, you know, at the same time they can develop the idea, their thinking, so it is more, it's much better in, 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 in multilingual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it is really good that you express about that. Like today, also myself, no? it's hard for me how I can express all the things that I concern in English. This is also the one thing in reality. Of course, um, uh, I think in order to, to make sure that all the thing is uh, related to the language is can still alive, it's not just only indigenous ourselves have to, to involve in protecting but also the other people also have to be involved and also learning our language. And also not just focus on their, their own. For example, like now, everywhere they speak English. And some, sometimes we cannot express all, 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 all things that we have in mind. So I think um, for my people in Cambodia, especially that we have 24, like I mentioned earlier, all of them, some, of, some like seven indigenous groups, they already lost because they're not encouragement from the government. And also not like do the research and documentation about the issue of the language barrier that they use in their uh, the, in their group, and also in the policy, you know, there is still gap. Also like uh, no like 
well document and also like writing. Like in, in my language, the Funong people, we have like written in like Latin, but this is not recognized from government. And then the government, they work with UNESCO and other organizations. They, they, they uh, encourage us to use like Khmer writing. It's hard for us to adapt to use that kind of uh, a letter, right, letter or writing. And um, also they try to uh, co uh, collaborate or uh, integrate in the technology. It's easy for us to write. And some, some people, not all, they can use that kind of system. It still needs like, more capacity building and uh, awareness raising to the local people, how it will be benefit for uh, the new generation to use that kind of uh, technology to bring their, uh, you know, their, their spirit especially that their identity and their culture in terms of uh, education and uh, anything that related to industry development, something like that. Mm. Yeah, just yes. yeah, if, if I can also say something uh, uh, about, um, some, I mean, we're speaking about uh, languages which are written right. also, but there are also oral languages uh, that are not written. and. Uh, uh, there's some feedback that we had from some indigenous communities that uh, they don't want these languages to be written, actually. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that's also another challenge. Uh, how can we provide tools for these languages to uh, to continue and to and to be uh, 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 ex accessible <laughs> through the uh, technology, through the internet, through the uh, without being really uh, written languages. So that's. Uh, uh, because the written form doesn't exist, uh, and unless the community really wants to do it, uh, that's not up to us, I believe, to decide for, for them. So how, how do you uh, manage to, to bridge this uh, huge gap? That's also something that uh, could be uh, addressed. Uh, I have just uh, one example on the uh, perception of indigenous peoples on their own languages. Uh, actually, it is uh, issues of... Uh, market value. You know, uh, when we started in 2006, uh, we have started the uh, mother tongue-based multilingual education uh, activities in our areas with uh, three major languages. Uh, that time, actually, uh, uh, some of the parents, when we started uh, working on this, they used to, always they used to raise the question that whether our children will get job uh, learning in their own languages. So that is very much important. So. Uh, now, actually, uh, they're uh, realizing, and also uh, uh, we are uh, trying to uh, make government understand about the uh, issue. And uh, recently, the government is uh, thinking to uh, to uh, to uh, put sort of uh, precondition for the teachers to be a teacher. Uh, they must have uh, 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 knowledge on uh, their own languages. Uh, uh, they, they, they must uh, they must be uh, able to read and write in their, in their own languages. So uh, after that, actually now, what we are seeing uh, uh, just uh, uh, last uh, one two years, uh, our uh, indigenous youths they are uh, starting to uh, learn their own languages uh, before they didn't know how to write and read their uh, languages. So now they are starting, and even uh, some youths they are arranging uh, uh, the training. Uh, how to read and write in their own languages, uh, putting their own, uh, uh, own uh, money from own pockets. So this is uh, a great, uh, I think, uh, uh, progress of the uh, indigenous people's uh, languages in, uh, in Bangladesh. Yeah. Yeah, so we are running out of time. So just to summarize the debate, I think for, um, for, for all of us, you know, one of the biggest challenges of indigenous languages is the fact that it's the languages that is transmitted to the next generations only through the goodwill of those communities who, who continue to speak those languages. And there is no uh, support from the system around. There is no support from education from uh, media, from uh, you know, even the lack of written script. So this is, the, I guess, the biggest challenges. And uh, so we have a, a hackathon that will start uh, we now in uh, one hour. But before moving to that, uh, would you be possible to, to say a final word about you know, what would be your expectation out of this hackathon and this collaboration with uh, the false community on this topic. Yes. 
Yes, uh, for my um, expectation, I hope this um, uh, voice today will be rich in the world and also like all indigenous people who still remain and practice their culture, they still continue to speak their language and also we need to call all the other people to be part of uh, encourage and work together to maintain our um, indigenous language in the world. Yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, for me, my expectation for this is will be like uh, it would be nice if um, Hackathon can help my work with the uh, colleague uh, can do like e learning things or what uh, app, uh, education games or application that um, help my uh, my uh, teacher, I mean, I, because we work with teacher, and then it would be nice if we, we do like a, I'm, I'm not sure that we can call like a community, a club or something like that, and then they can they can talk to each other, they can share, share what they, the, the ideas or encourage each other uh, by using the language that they are familiar with. It would be nice, and we also, in, in Thailand, no, now, nowadays, um, we, we are not, I mean, government is not take those, uh, talk, uh, take this this um, this program to 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 apply it or or, uh, or the country yet, but uh, many many school uh, government school are interested in this, and then it would be nice for us if we have a, like a, a e learning things. I think maybe like this, and it would be because it, we can express to we can share with them more easy, and then they can approach it uh -huh. yeah okay uh, <clears throat> my expectation on, uh, from this uh, hackathon is uh, actually uh, most of the indigenous peoples in our country in our region specifically they live in the uh, remote areas so sometimes they don't have uh, smooth internet connections so uh, i would be uh, very much uh, uh, grateful to know uh, from uh, our uh, participants and all the experts from uh, of this uh, hackathon how we can help the indigenous peoples to uh, to to make their languages available through online and offline, uh, both both of the ways. Yeah. So for me, uh, very similar. We are living in the very remote area, so we could not access to internet. Um, very difficult. And for me, uh, I'm looking for an opportunity in this uh, hackathon uh, program. To, to see how can I adjust the app or application um, that I can use uh, some information that we have in our community. For example, in Greenhouse Community Volunteer Group, we are working on uh, making short film and also documentary. And we want to, uh, you know, like after we film, we document this and how can we apply in the mobile app and how can this can spread the world, you know, to make our indigenous to be proud and learn about their culture through that kind of app. And sometimes we, we can bring um, like uh, internet, like wireless, we can bring that to community and we can show them. So this we call mobile, um, mobile um, show, something like that. Yeah, so I myself also um, a film director and I have been uh, uh, direct few film already, and also in Kumpu language. And I was so proud that I can that I had opportunity to show it in my community. And they are so like their eye looks so bright and big. They they cannot imagine that we can do this, and they laugh a lot. And I think that will be something that I can apply also in my community and other community. Yep. And also one thing, um, the language, we also have it, that um, our Kumpu uh, ancestor or kum elder, we create our own alphabet. And we also looking for um, network here uh, who can also help us to see if this is something that we should uh, keep it, you know, like record it for our uh, indigenous. Yeah, thank you. Um, what can I say more? <laughs> I think uh, uh, I hope that uh, maybe what comes out it's really maybe the beginning of something that uh, it's uh, going to be uh, maybe kept uh, in mind by not only the participant to the hackathon but also the entire Force Asia community uh, and maybe that uh, some of the uh, innovations that are even showcased uh, downstairs uh, in the exhibition mm. could be uh, you know 
uh, retweaked and rethought uh, for uh, for indigenous languages uh, uh, and for the indigenous communities. Uh, uh, one example, I think uh, we were uh, Isaac was discussing this morning was how to use maybe uh, uh, AI uh, open source AI solutions that are uh, maybe able to work uh, even offline, and they could really be uh, maybe uh, helpful uh, in uh, producing tools uh, that are you know uh, helping. Uh, indigenous languages uh, to, uh, to to be accessible, but also to uh, to live. Yeah. Uh, so so um, yeah. yeah. These are the very nice uh, innovation to explore here. So thank you very much for listening to us, and uh, thank you very much for the speakers. And so we we see you again in our here for the hackathon. Thank you.